Hello again, Roman is back here. We continue to dive into crowdsourcing approach. Quality control is particularly important in crowdsourcing. You can have a perfectly designed project with great instructions and user-friendly interface, but it might still produce useless data if it's not checked properly. Even if you're running questionnaires and there is no correct answer, you still need to confirm that the task isn't being completed by bots. Designing quality control is a multi-stage process. It starts with thinking through the task's logic and ends with smart aggregation of the results. The first steps involve breaking down the task, putting together good instructions, and designing a clear and usable interface. We discussed how to deal with these challenges in previous videos. The next important step is selecting performers based on certain essential characteristics. Explore the input filters offered by the platform itself. The most popular ones include the country and city where the users live, their operating system, preferred languages, and their gender and age. If you think that any of these filters will give you a better subset of performers, use them. Now that we have selected our potential performers, they need to be trained. In our context, training involves a set of tasks with comments that performers will see when they give an incorrect answer. What makes an effective training set? It should demonstrate all the guidelines from the instructions, even the simplest ones. You can use several examples for more complex guidelines, of course. Explain why a given answer is correct or not. Even better, reference a particular section of the instructions. This will give participants an extra reason to reread and absorb the instructions rather than click through the training as quickly as possible. After training the candidates, you need to confirm they understand the project guidelines. This is where tests come in. Tests confirm that performers have understood the instructions and their training. When a project is launched, the quality of the performance can be monitored from various perspectives. It is important to track external signs of suspicious or simply careless behavior. Requesters are often concerned that they might be dealing with a bot and not a real person. Use capture as a basic tool to distinguish actual people from bots. But performers can get tired of monotonous work and lose concentration, so don't punish them for one or two mistakes when doing a capture. Monitor how fast the task is done to check for fraud. Are there any performers who finish tasks in 5 seconds? Create custom checks using JavaScript that cover possible actions in your interface. Other tasks that involve watching a video, but performers submit a response without having watched it. How can you make sure that performers who pass all the behavior checks are actually making good quality assessments and providing good data labels? There are several ways you can do this. Overlap. Are there any performers whose opinions consistently contradict those of other participants? A control task. Are the performers who give incorrect answers to the simplest questions? And assignment review. If a task involves creative work, does it fit the guidelines? Overlap is when several people perform the same task. For example, you can get five different users to assess one picture in order to flock images for adult content. This means you are setting an overlap of five. Overlap is crucial for most crowdsourcing tasks. Control tasks, also known as golden sets, are tasks with known correct answers. The control task is presented to the performer as a normal task without letting them know there is a special check involved. By adding control task to your project, you can work out the percentage of correct responses for the project and the percentage of correct responses for individual performance. You can use control tasks only for questions that have a single correct answer. But not all crowd tasks are like this. 
Some need a creative approach or content processing and can have a variety of correct solutions. You can check such tasks using assignment review. There are two possible ways to review a task. On the requester's side, a crowdsourcing platform may even have this option in its UI, but this will only work for very small data volumes or if the requester has unlimited resources. And the second way is other crowd performers can do the review. First, you create a data labeling project. Then, in another project, you show the labeled data to a different group of performers and ask them whether the tasks were completed correctly. After this verification, incorrect labeled tasks are sent back for evaluation. Performers are paid for tasks that were labeled correctly, and performer quality can be determined. Research shows that performers follow various aspects of their work on crowdsourcing platforms. However, money dominates over all other motivations. Setting the price is an important step in designing every project. Register as a performer and check the prices for similar projects. Prices vary across different types of tasks, depending on the expected time and effort involved. For instance, classifying basic images is much faster and easier than creating content. This difference can be seen in the task prices, of course. But even careful analysis doesn't always help predict demand. The optimal price may depend on the project's individual factors. The easiest solution is to do a test run with a small amount of data and see how performers behave on your tasks. If you had to choose a task to work on, what would you care about apart from getting paid? For me, personally, I want my job to be exciting and important for the community. Getting paid is very important, but the way a task is framed is crucial in motivating performers. What can we do to make the tasks in our project meaningful for performers? Well, there's no rule of thumb, but try to be creative and think about what would get you interested in your task. One approach is to explain to the performers why the data is actually being collected. For example, preserving heritage is more meaningful than just typing out someone's handwriting. Similarly, to make sure performers don't feel that their work is ignored, you can try to explain how the data will be used in your pipeline. That way, you acknowledge that the performer's work is actually meaningful and important. Finally, don't forget about the importance of clean instructions and well-designed interfaces. Careless mistakes with these aspects can really bring down performers' motivation. Of course, these approaches work best when they are combined. So, the quality of the data depends on motivation and can be estimated through a combination of behavior checks and control tasks. After collecting the data, you can use smart response aggregation algorithms to check reliability. We'll have a video dedicated to this topic. In our next video, we'll have a look at how to deal with the collected answers. See you there!